You started your writing career. I prefer to think of it as my descent into darkness. Fine, your descent into darkness then, with a poetry recitation, a piece you wrote two years ago. The garden and the snake, the start of all that followed. Darkness and the collapse, the fall out of the womb, the desert and the thorn, the first human screams of pain. Artificial lights, the moon no longer shines on their faces, turning to fire and ash to light the darkness in their souls. Darkness pressing all around, coming sooner, fading later, ringing out louder and louder and louder in my ear. The screaming, screaming. In my ear they come screaming, they come in my ear. Screaming every night, they come in my ear. Every night, they fucking come. Come in my fucking ear. Come in my fucking ear. My ear, my ear. Come in my mother fucking ear. Do you feel this is your breakthrough piece? Yes. It's a piece that showed me the pain inherent in our past. You see? The Christians were right about one thing in original sin, the first part. See, we don't have original sin. We have original pain. The pain of being ripped away from the garden. By the garden, I mean, of course, the Garden of Eden. Anyway, original pain is the pain that's in each and every one of us. The pain that keeps us awake every night, begging for redemption. Redemption from a distant and uncaring God. Yes. When I wrote it, I knew I was taking a step. I felt my writing had really matured, even though a small minority of people misinterpreted it. Really? They misinterpreted, they come screaming in my ear? Yes, they thought it referred to my sexual abuse as a child that I referred to in an earlier poem. You mean the dark sex of the beast that spreads his seed on my thighs? Yes, that's the one. So, tell me about this new piece. Ah, yes, the, the new one, the script for the feature. It's uh, my darkest work to date. Just a walk through the nightly realms of my nightmare vision. The main character is very similar to me in personality, in the demons he's wrestling with and committing his murders. Sounds intense. It is. Some of my best work to date. It will reinvent the dead genre. You can forget about all those other writers. They're just selling books. I'm creating dark art. Dark art indeed. It's gone through a number of title changes. What's the working title now? I believe we found our title. It really captures the essence of the anti-disestablishmentarianism I've been trying to push through all my work, and indeed have done in all my work. It was amazing, really, once we found that the answer was simplicity. The title of our movie is The Name of Our Beast. Very simply, The Tequila Killer. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so late this morning. I gotta get these papers together for a production meeting I have with um, Benny No Thumbs. Yeah, he's the producer, and we just don't keep Benny waiting. And uh, I've been waiting for a phone call from Vivian, and, and I guess you guys want to ask me some questions, huh? Oh, shit. Can I say shit, or are you guys gonna bleep that out? I really gotta take this. I'm sorry. Hello? Simon, it's Vivian. Vivian, how the hell are you? How am I? Let's see. I haven't heard from you in almost two months, and the other night I come home and there's a message from Simon on my answering machine. It's not, I'm sorry, it's not, let's talk. It's come work for me? Look, we can figure that all out when you get down here. Get down there? Who said I was coming down there? Why on earth would I be coming there? Vivian, hear me out. Fine. Let me talk to you for a minute as a professional. All right, all right, go ahead. Let's hear it. Okay. I'm making a movie and I want you to be my AD. Real descriptive, Simon. I mean, making a movie, want me to help. I got all that from your message. Tell me a little bit about your mythical movie. Who wrote it? Where are you getting the money? Come on. Okay. This movie's gonna be fan-fucking-tastic. Ned wrote it. I mean, well, 
you can't call him that anymore. You gotta call him Ozzy Mandius. Ozzy what now? Mandius. Ozzy Mandius. I don't know. He's going through some weird phase or whatever. I, you know, you you remember back in high school when he was all grunge all the time? Well, he's traded in his flannel shirts for eyeliner. So what? He's a transsexual now? Nah, he's a goth. Same thing. So why are you making a movie he wrote? I mean, I've read Ned's stuff. It's not that good. No. It, this one's different, okay? Ned wrote a really fucking good script. Okay, get this, right? There's this guy, he's lonely, he's depressed, you know, and, uh, you know, naturally he's been hitting the bottle, right? So, um, anyway, uh, so he goes down to this bar and instead of, um, you know, the usual, uh, you know, taking home a woman, he takes home a bottle of tequila. So it's really sort of your life story, right? I... <laughs> No! Anyway, so he takes home this bottle of tequila, right? And, uh, you know, in the bottom of the bottle is this demonic worm, okay, that demands flesh. So this guy starts going to shady bars and he, and, you know, starts bringing home victims to this warehouse that he's living in now. And he kills them. Now that sounds like a quality picture. I mean, <laughs> right up there with Rocky Horror and Plan 9 from Outer Space. What's in it for me? Why should I come? Money. This isn't going to be like Paranoia Cubed, okay? There's real money in this, Viv, okay? And I've been reading your live journal, so, I mean, you know, I know you're out there and you're not getting paid, you know, come on. <laughs> you know, you're taking clothes to dry cleaners for producers who don't even know your name. Look, I'm offering you an opportunity to work on a real film with a real budget and a real producer. Simon? I don't know. I mean, L.A.'s gorgeous, New York's cold. Vivian, I need you. Uh, for this film, that is. Um, and I... Look, I cannot do this film without you. Okay, okay. But only because it's you, Simon. Have your producer book me a flight. I'll come. Thanks, Viv. And, uh... <clears throat> by the way, there's this company and they're making a documentary of the making of this film. So, you're gonna be on film for like 24 hours a day. And they're probably recording this call, but, you know, anyway. What? <laughs> what? I, what the hell? I'm not coming down there to be on the We're real like, world. For... I, I Simon? Can't, can't. Simon, I know you're fucking... Don't pull I gotta, this. I called you on meeting. the landline, for God's sake. So I'll Simon, call you. this isn't funny. Anyway. I'm Simon Woodworker. I'm 24. And I'm going to be directing an independent feature, The Tequila Killer. And I'm going to be late. This ex-con you got working for you, behind the camera, this Berkheimer guy, he says he knows somebody named Monkey Hole, work for beers. My cousin is in the liquor distribution business. So it's practically free labor. Thank God for alcoholism. What? Wait, I told you, I get cheap liquor, and it won't even affect your budget. Next, crewman. I can't believe you're going to pay. Next. He's a drunk called Monkey Hole? I hired a Jew named Simon. No. Next. I... Next, crewman. Okay, okay. Look, if you're not going to pay the boom operator, you can at least pay Vivian. What, the assistant director? Can't you talk to her, have a work for experience or something like that? We'll even have food on the set for her. Hey, wait a minute. Ain't that that broad you used to bang? <laughs> um, no. I dated Vivian in college. Yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter. Here's what you gotta do. You gotta talk to her. Say you wanna discuss things over, work things out, and shit, she'll be down here faster than you could book her a flight. Vinny, she's my drop point. I'm not making this film without her, and she's not working on my set if she's not paid. Fine. But I tell you this, if I gotta pay Vivian, then I'm gonna have to forego on your insistence to hire a trained stuntman. Look, I got this guy, Rocky. Okay, he's a bouncer at my club. The man's falling down so many flights of stairs, breaking up fights and whatnot, I swear to you on my life, he's got this down to a science. And since he's already on my payroll, it won't cost you anything on your budget. I think I'll inform him of his added duties.
This morning we're going out to Location Scout. Vinny, the producer, he owns this warehouse, or I should say a subsidiary of Vinny's company, which is a subsidiary of... I don't know what. Anyway, um, we're going to go check out this warehouse for a site we have in mind for the Killer's Inner Sanctum, as it were. So, yeah, let's go. It's perfect. Crane shot coming over the top. God, i got to get in there. Come on, let's go. Hey, what are you doing here? Um, this must be our contact. Uh, hi there, Mr. Anthony. Um, Vinny sent me to check out the place. Vinny? Vinny who? I know lots of Vinnies. Um, Vinny no thumbs? No thumbs? That fuck, did he send you with the money he owes me? Um, I, I'm just here to scout out a location for the movie he's making. Um, said he knew people here. Oh! You're here to scout the location. Look, the only movies he makes requires you to scout out the local hotel bedroom, not my warehouse. Unless... Is he making a snuff film? Because I told him not to do that anymore at the time he fucked up and he, that chick got away and told the cops on it. <laughs> Hypothetically speaking, I mean, of course. Uh, this alleged Vinny might have allegedly mentioned a, an, an uh, alleged snuff film. Look, just get the fuck out of here and don't come back till you got my money. But I spent two weeks storyboarding <coughs> for this location. It's perfect. Look, this money that Vinny allegedly owes you, how much was it? Maybe I can drum up some of it for him. Can I shoot her then? He allegedly owes me 40 grand. Oh. Um. Well, that's a little out of my price range. Uh, I've already maxed out my credit line. Then we ain't got nothing to talk about. Now, I'm gonna count to three. If you're not out of here by two and a half, I'm gonna allegedly start pulling the trigger. One, two. Mr. No Thumbs? Vinny? Dr. No? No, just call me Vinny. Right, Vinny. So, what made you interested in the Tequila Killer? What, what got you interested in the project? Chicks. Excuse me? You know, chicks. I figure once this film hits the market, all the, the what do you call them, the, uh, the gots. You know, the broads with the pale face and the dyed hair and the not on the me, the, the, the corsets, and you you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, they really do it for me, if you know what I'm saying, you know what I mean. So, what I figure is, is once they see that the No Thumbs production is behind this masterpiece, and I, and the No Thumbs behind that, well, these broads are going to be more likely to, you know, want to jump my bones. He shot at me! Benny, where the hell did you send me? He shot at me with real bullets! My mother's car has bullet holes in it! Not to mention we have no location! Wait a minute, wait a minute. Just relax. Relax? How am I supposed to relax? He damn near killed the documentary camera guy! Who shot at you? Was it Tony? Yes, thank God! He's only got one eye! If you have better depth perception... Oh, God. What am I gonna do about this location? I start principal photography in less than a week. What am I supposed to do without my principal location? Is Vivian arrived yet? She's got to. Oh, okay. What am I going to tell my mother when she sees bullet holes in her car? It's a lease. What do I tell the dealer? Well, I wasn't running drugs or guns or anything. I was on a location scout, honest. They charge $600 for being 10 miles over the limit. What are you going to charge for bullet holes in the back of the car? Here, have a drink. Sit down. Relax. Now, let's break this down strategically. Are you hurt? No, but my mother's... Was your camera guy hurt? He seems okay. Okay. Look. Here in No Thumbs Production, we're like a family. And when somebody messes with a member of my family, certain repercussions you can't expect. Don't worry. You're just gonna let Uncle Vinny take care of everything. You'll get your location, 
And my cousin Louie, in the extended family, well, he's very adept at erasing the existence of certain holes caused by certain flying pieces of metal. Your mother will never be the wiser. So, Mr. Woodworker, if you would be so kind as to take your camera crew to your art meeting, I've got personal phone calls to make. You too, buddy. And remember, I am your producer. Therefore, I produce. One, two, three, go! Now, I really like this design for the worm, but it could use a little more detail along the posterior here. I was thinking of like a centipede-like thing. Um, maybe not legs, but appendages of some sort. You know, to get that creepy, lots of limbs moving at the same time sort of thing. I see, like... That maybe? Yeah, like that, but on the other body. Like the other body better? I like the other body better, definitely. It has that hammer studio look to it. I was going for that look of it, actually. So. Yeah, I really like those old-fashioned photography techniques, you know, like reverse projection or animatronics either way. I haven't met the special effects guy yet, so I'm not sure how he plans to do this, but <sighs> he's going to be busy with these sketches. Now, what do you see for the head? I mean, you don't want a lot of detail, or do you? Well, more detail is always good. Um, the eyes should be alive, you know, mad. Um, you should be able to see the taint in there, you know? Um, kind of like madness manifest in a way. Do worms have eyes? Well, this one does. Right. Okay, so I think we're definitely closer to your vision for this thing than we have been before. I think we've almost got it. Yeah, um, this head and body is perfect. A um, little more detail with the eyes, and these appendages are just going to clinch it. All right, it shouldn't take me too long. I should... Excuse me. Hello? It's me, Simon. Oh, hi. Uh, Vivian, you're in town? Simon, do you know what Rubinetto Ettore Airlines are? No, I don't know what Rubinetto Ettore Airlines are, but I hear those Italian planes are plush. Mm. They fly livestock from rural town to rural town and crop dust in the off-season. Your producer flew me down in one. You were in a plane full of livestock. Right, you mean in the cockpit? No, no, no. I mean with the livestock. I was sitting next to a goat with a chicken coop behind my seat. But you're not livestock. <laughs> Obviously, your producer disagrees. Look, I, I, had a, I had him send you a taxi this morning because I had a meeting with the storyboard artist. What? You mean the creepy guy holding up a liquor box with my name on it? What do you mean creepy? What do I mean creepy? Well, he's a little taller than most guys and a little bigger than most guys. And he's wearing slacks with a button-down shirt and a tie that only comes halfway to his belt. But you know, Simon... His most distinguishing feature is his eye patch! Vivian, what I'm about to say is very important. Do not go with that man. Do not get in that car. I'll be over there in two minutes. Just wait for me in the ladies' room. What? Wait in the lo- Simon, there is no fucking ladies' room here. Christ, you did the same thing when we were going to Puerto Rico for vacation. I went to the restroom for two minutes, and I come back to find out that, find out that you've run off with some tramp you met in the lobby. I swear, you took her Gotta on go, a vacation. My fa Do you want to see some nice pictures of worms?
today's a big day. First day of shooting. I've got like, I don't know, 25 setups? They should be pretty easy though. A lot of them are one-liners and transition shots. So they should go pretty quick. I guess I better get some coffee and get started. I don't want to be late for my first shoot. Pick up the phone, monkey hole. Pick up, pick up. Pick up! Sorry about making you drive this, but my car kicked the bucket last night. I kept trying to drive it even after I curbed it. But I was drunk and I threw up all over the dashboard and I couldn't see how fast I was going and so I had to stop and the car wouldn't start after that. is a real asshole. How the hell do you get monkey hole up in the morning? Watch. Come little children, get your treat. Buy some beer and put up your feet. The alcohol's high and the sugar is low. The more you drink, more beer will flow. Come little children. Come on, time for work. You're such an asshole. I'll tell you one story from my childhood in a drunken stupor. You abuse it. Okay, so what was that? Oh, the rape and abuse of childhood memories. Actually, Monkey Hole told me about when he was a child, he used to buy beer from the ice cream man because beer is cheaper than ice cream. That's horrible. Don't knock it till you've tried it. The song? Mm, let me see. Wait, 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 what? My mother used to sing that to me when I, when I was a child, before I went to sleep. Today, the world will see in the first permanent moment of the script, burned forever into the memory of film. It's like the first verse being set in ink, only this time... It's on film? Yes, it's on film. But because it's on film, the ink is light itself. And the paper, flickering, fickle silver screen, where the Gosi himself danced the midnight dance. And tonight, I dance that same dance. It's only 8.30 and it's in the morning. Shouldn't we wait till midnight to dance the midnight dance? <sighs> I mentioned to Simon that the hour of darkness would be best for mood and atmosphere, but he prattled on about paying labor twice their rage after seven or some such fiscal months. I stopped listening after his second explanation. Yo, Nedster. Ozymandias, my intoxicated friend. Please pay attention. It's 8.30 in the morning and I'm not drunk yet. So your name could be Jesus Tap Dancing Christ for all I care. All I know is they told me to get the pale guy and I get my bottle of vodka. Very well. Inform them that I'll be along shortly. Jerry's still polishing the fruits knob. Vivian, will you see if you can get him for me? I gotta move this along quickly and I can't wait for him to polish his knob or whatever he's doing. <laughs> Mr. Pinkerton. My name is Ozymandias for Lucifer's sake. Can't anybody pay attention to the sign on the door? Lucifer's sake? Who says that? Besides, your name's not on the door. It says, warning, asbestos ahead. The sign must have fallen off again. Asbestos? Bitch, you can finish your own makeup. Anyway, what is it? You're half an hour late to shoot, Mr. Ozymandias, and you're holding everybody up. Move your ass. Very well. 